Good morning. I hope you're doing well. And let's start with our presentation today on the topic, the Python 3.11, uh, which is assumed to be the newest version of Python recently uh, released. Although we know that in the next uh, few months uh, we will see uh, 3.12, but for now we have 3.11. Okay, so first a little bit about me. Uh, Python is my favorite language since 2007. I had a big pause from programming, but got back during a half period of my life because I found a passion uh, in myself during it. During it. Uh, my first programming language is actually C++. I'm a student at the Inter International University of Applied Sciences in Germany, computer science. Mentored by Google engineer, and my interests include Python in general, Django, data science, machine learning, and AI, like everybody else in Python. Almost everybody touches and tests machine learning or AI with Python. Okay, what we are going to talk about today. The type dicts, the self-type, improved error messages, as think I uh, Tom read only supporting std lib, improved type variables, and speed improvements. Um, I will start first with the typed uh, dict and what is it, what is required and not required, and the types of inheritance uh, we can use with the type dicts. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, do you know what type dict is and uh, have you ever used it? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, actually, type dict uh, was specified in PEP uh, 589 uh, 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 and introduced in Python uh, 3.8. Uh, on all our versions of Python, actually, uh, versions before 3.11, you can install it from type extensions, or in other words, this is um, PIP install typing uh, extensions. In Python 3.11, it's directly imported from typing. So you can just um, use the typing um, library. Type dict or just a dict? It's a question asked all over the web uh, in the forums and um, uh, in, in, in general in the, when it comes to the newest version of Python. Actually, the dict uh, key and value type lets you declare uniform dictionary types where every value uh, has non defined type and uh, arbitrary keys are supported, but the type dict um, allows you to describe a structured dictionary, where the type of each dictionary value depends on the key. The interesting stuff is that, like, uh, if we have this example here, and uh, I will try the laser now, okay? Um, if we have this class and uh, and the method, and if you um, if you decide to, for example, uh, call it, and if you change um, the values here, like for example, uh, instead of a string, we have a, let's say an integer. Um, the, the ID you use, uh, it will warn you that something is wrong and um, the, a string actually is uh, expected to be seen here. Um, actually, I think I prepared, prepared some examples here for you guys where we can see something interesting, like for example, Let's go here, and we have the string, we have the integer, but let's say if I change this one here to this one, sorry, and you will see that I'm, uh, I was warned that it is expected uh, integer to be, uh, to be put here instead, uh, instead of a string. So let's continue. Um, this is the first example, of course. Um, uh, so we have here an integer, a string, and a list of integers. And uh, of course, this is expected to be to have the same um, types of values here. Uh, this is the second example we saw. So we will go to the inheritance now, where um, there is an important rule uh, of thumb here when you use type dict, and it is that type dict cannot inherit from both a type dict type and a non type dict uh, base class. So we have a I think something uh, pretty simple here where we have a class of songs, a class of band name where we have strings and this is a, a way to uh, to call the type dict 
It's an interesting way, interesting syntax, actually. And uh, we have a multiple inheritance here where we have one class A, one class B. And if you see here, we have a, um, a regular way to define a class. But if we want to, uh, to combine them into multiple inheritance here, this is not possible. Uh, uh, and uh, even the interpreter will, um, uh, will warn you for this. I can show you this example here. Let me do this, and you will see that we have an error, a rise on error, which is here, yeah. Um, let's continue. Uh, same happens actually uh, here, but there is also an interesting thing that uh, you have three types of classes here, actually three type dicts, and uh, in the result song, uh, you can even combine them, like for example, you have the song info first, then you have the band. Uh, look at that, this is just a band, not that info, band info. And you have the lead singer, so they can be even combined uh, when, when you call them. Um, there is also another way, this is uh, also called the nested type dict example, where you have, of course, the type dicts and we can nest them uh, in that form of the, the syntax. I know it's looks a little bit uh, complicated for reading here, but this is the syntax. Of course, you can make them multi-line. Uh, required and not required. This is another thing in, uh, introduced into Python 3.11, where we can use, uh, from typing important, uh, along with the type dict, we can also uh, uh, import the not required, uh, uh, not required thing. So we have the uh, attributes of the type dict, like here we have the name, we have the age, and uh, about the person, we can ask if it's married or not, but if we uh, define not required in this form, of course, you have to define the uh, data type. Um, this is not required, actually. So uh, if you test it like this, um, like, for example, PyCharm will not ask you to, uh, to add it here. But if it's required, like, for example, I prepared a small example here for you, again. If you make it, uh, if you make it required, then it will be uh, expected to be seen. Let me see if I have it here. I think so. Not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's here. Yes. So here it's not required, but. Uh, See what happens if I remove not required. This was uh, this was high highlighted because if I go with my uh, mouse here, it will tell you that the type dict um, user has missing key merit. Uh, this is a very convenient uh, thing for us, the developers, because uh, if we miss something, the ID will uh, remind us that something is not something is not okay or we skipped something. Um, it's an, it, this is another example here where we have, this is actually what I showed you. Uh, but there is another thing, um, another interesting thing here, here is that we, instead of non-required, you, um, you can import required, but then you have to add the, um, the, the parameter total equals to false. And then you can choose what is required and what's not required. In this situation, these two will be required and the third one will not be required. So the, um, the result will be almost the same, just the syntax is a little bit, a little bit different. Um, you can also control what is required and not required with the unary operators, the plus, minus, and um, I don't know how to pronounce this, this uh, sign, actually. Uh, so if you have the plus, this means this is required. Uh, if you have minus, this means, of course, it is not required. Um, this special stand actually means the opposite of the normal uh, totality uh, key. So this is another interesting way, and it is the shorter way actually to uh, to be done because in the other, the pre uh, in, in the previous two examples, you have to um, write a little bit more. So it's all up to you. I have seen in GitHub in different examples and different uh, applications and code uh, pieces of code. Uh, both of the ways for um, uh, for defining uh, the the attributes, the self type. 
the class method becomes self in 3.11. Um, previously, if you had to define a class method that returned an object of the class itself, it would look something like this one here. So we have the type var here, and uh, this uh, returns none, but we have the class method, and uh, uh, it, will be, it will return the t, and after that we will have the uh, regular stuff for the um, class method, and to be able to, uh, to say that the method returns the same type as the class itself, we have to define the type one and say that the method returns the same type t as the current class uh, itself. But here is what happened uh, with the self type. So first we have, we have to import it, actually. Uh, we have a class language here with uh, the init and the change version, and uh, of course, this is the uh, this is uh, this is where the self is uh, uh, where self is returned, and also another interesting uh, example where we have one class and another class, and when both of them uh, return self, uh, you can use the methods of both of them, and you can even combine them. And of course, I will show you the examples now. You will see that they work. So this is the first one, and you will see here that the uh, here that the um, version of the language is changed because we use the methods here to change version. Uh, but if we go here, and if you will see that this will work now because uh, uh, both of them, uh, this is normal to be uh, to be returned. Both of them actually um, return self. Uh, here, here is what happens if I change, for example, this one, and I set it to grant. And boom, we have an error. So um, both of them, when you, when you use self, both of them should return, uh, should return self, okay? Um, another thing we have in, um, Python 3.11, and, and this is actually one of the most loved um, things in the community of Python is that we have improved exceptions. Um, and I will show you some examples. Uh, uh, what what the, these improved exceptions actually include are better error messages, exception nodes, and exception groups. Um, so uh, in the better error messages first, you know where your error is. Or um, <laughs> Python is able to highlight the exact uh, place the exact um, uh, the exact spot on your uh, lines of code where you have errors. Could be more than one. Hopefully, we don't have any errors. Um, but this is almost impossible. Uh, exception nodes. Leave yourself a note in your custom exception. Yes, we can already leave exception nodes. Um, it's relatively simple to be done. And exception groups. This is where we can define exceptions. We can group them and uh, we can use them uh, when it's appropriate to be, uh, to be used. Um, until now, in the traceback, the only information you got about where an exception got rights was the wine. Yes, we, until now we got, just the, we got just the wine. But now if you see this example here, there is an error, and you will see it in the next slide, where Python already shows us the wine and also shows us the um, the reason for the error. In this situation, we have an unsupported operand type of uh, S4. Um, uh, this is for uh, dividing here, and we cannot divide an type and an integer. So uh, we, all, we have three elements here. Actually, we have the line, which is something we have previously. Then we have the line two and the exact error, and we have the type error. I think this is pretty cool. Um, the exception nodes, actually, um, this is something that is really new, and it's coming in the PEP 678. Uh, and in, inside your accept clauses, you can call the add node um, uh, function, and you can pass a custom uh, message when you, when you write an error. I will show you in a second what can be done. So you have a video here, we have an add node, and this is a small piece of code where we import math, and we try to uh, to square the minus one, but you will get this message here where we uh, added the node negative value best. Please try again, and we will raise it. I know that the syntax is a little bit um, exotic, I would say, compared to what we used 
to um, to write this code, but uh, this is what 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 the what the new thing is. And uh, of course, I think it's very convenient because we can write almost everything meaningful to us instead of just writing the regular uh, errors uh, of uh, of Python. But this is up to up to the developer, I think. But I find it really convenient. And when you, another way to add exception nodes actually is, is if you define class, if you know if you use this um, the method nodes, and this is a custom error. Uh, uh, have a look that you define the, your message into a list. Uh, and when you try uh, this, this is a more, I would say, more clean way um, to write the code because you have the, the, the uh, you, you try for, uh, to square the number and you have the accept and you just write uh, your class defined in the form of exception. And you can see on the right side of the slide that uh, this is actually does, all, uh, does the same thing, uh, but you see also that this is a custom error, uh, along with the regular errors of, um, of Python. Exception groups is something also very, something that is also very interesting. One way to think about the exception groups is actually that they are regular exceptions wrapping several other regular exceptions. This is why they are called groups, of course. However, uh, while exception groups behave like regular exceptions in many aspects, they also su um, support special syntax uh, that helps you handle each of the wrapped exceptions, uh, exceptions effectively. In Python 3.11, we group exceptions with exception group, um, with this exception group uh, method. So if we use this, uh, you can also you can add a message here, and then you um, uh, add all of the uh, of the types of exceptions you want to be raised in a list, and you uh, and you have to you have to be careful with the order because they will appear in the same order when they are raised. Um, this is how they look like, and you see that they. If we get back, we have the file not found, so we have here the file not found our. Uh, first message we defined is also here. Then we had a value error. The value error is also here, and zero division error where the zero division error is here. Uh, you can even call them one by one. It's a little bit complicated, of course, because the syntax is again a little bit exotic. But um, it is uh, we have tried something, and we have the accept with this uh, asterisk here. Uh, file not found as uh, FMV uh, and. Uh, we can print them so we, we can see the, actually we can see here the actual um, types of the errors uh, and, uh, and the messages just like regular lines of, let's say, strings, for example. Um, I think IO is uh, something that is uh, uh, one important thing that is uh, improved here, actually created, uh, is the task groups where if you have this example here, the newest thing is that uh, you can make a task of groups and uh, uh, the groups of tasks, tasks actually, sorry, and um, they will be um, they will be executed here. Um, oops, something happened. Okay, um, so they will be. Um, there will be, you can also do here loops, conditions, and so on. So um, tasks here will be, um, they will be executed, uh, of course, and um, uh, this, is, this is how they, uh, how you can um, actually group all these tasks uh, into, one, uh, into one function, uh, compared to what we have here, uh, where um, things are kind of a little bit, uh, kind of a little bit more complicated. Or in other words, this was created for more, um, clean and more readable code. Um, uh, TOML support uh, or uh, Python has the ability to read TOML files for the very first time. Um, it is uh, Thomson Vice minimal language uh, configuration file format that's gotten popular over the last decade. Um, the Python community actually embraced, has embraced the TOML as a form of a choice when specifying metadata for packages and projects. I've seen this on um, different projects actually, and I think that it's it's been um, it's been widely used uh, already. 
uh, it's, it's been also designed to be easy for humans to read and easy for computers to parse. Um, and uh, the Tomo has been here for uh, years and used by many different tools, but unfortunately Python hasn't had built-in uh, Tomo support, uh, which changes now in Python 3.11 when Tomo Leap is added to the standard library. Yes, it's included um, directly. Um, this new model is built on top of the popular Tomo Reader part library and I want you to parse Tomo files. Um, I think you know how a Tomo file would look like. This is an example. Um, actually, with the with the new um, uh, with the new Tomo, uh, Tomo Leap um, library, uh, this brings support for parsing. We can parse them, uh, but we cannot write to them. Still, we cannot do them. Uh, um, when using this, we can use the load. Um, uh, load function, so you can pass in a file object that must be opened in binary mode, and we can specify the mode to be RB. Uh, there are two main functions in the uh, Tomo Leap library, actually. The load, that load bytes from a file, and the loads load from a uh, string. And you can he uh, see him uh, here some examples of how this is done. Pretty much the same how we open files in uh, Python, actually. Okay, improved type variables. Uh, we have here the arbitrary literal string type, data class transforms, negative zero formatting, improved type variables, and variety uh, generics. Um, in, in, in interesting thing here is that uh, when we have the arbitrary literal string type, and if you have defined the literal here, actually if we add another um, type of string, uh, Python will uh, warn us that uh, it expects to see something different instead of what we, what we define. Uh, but to under this limitation, Python 311 introduces a new general type, literal string. So we have a literal string, which allows the users to enter any string literal, so like below. So if we have, instead of just literal, if we use literal string, and uh, we, we can uh, type any kind of, any, any string actually here, so this will be um, accepted. Um, this is also applicable uh, when constructing literal SQL query strings, and you can refer to the official PEP 675 to read more about this. Uh, variety generics is uh, something that's uh, also very interesting. So if you have these generics here, you can, uh, when you define classes, you can start um, uh, in, in, inherit uh, here these generics in, into the classes, uh, and you can even combine them. Like here it's dim one, two, and three. Three of three are here. And um, also as shown that for three dimensions we will have to define these three types and their respective classes, which is not clean and it presents a high level of repetition. Yes, we have this uh, high level so that we should be uh, cautious about. And in Python 3.11 uh, introduces the type var, uh, the type var tuple. Um, this type var tuple actually allows us uh, to create generics using multiple uh, types. Like for example, if we have this uh, generic type of tuple, we can uh, assign it to a variable and we uh, call it here, then we make a class and uh, this is pretty much like we, uh, how we impact the, uh, the arcs and the, the, like we, how we impact the arcs for example. Um, negative zero formatting is uh, fixed here so, like for example, normally there is only one zero, and it's neither positive or negative. And we definitely had this error previously. I've tried it several times, um, just because I was curious. And one, uh, one weird concept that you might run into when doing calculations with floating point, especially the floating point. Uh, previously, <coughs> we can say that uh, Python will return us minus zero. Now this is already fixed, and we don't have such a uh, such a problem anymore. Uh, data class transform uh, is uh, something that's a little bit more advanced here. Um, I don't know, uh, have you ever guys used this? Raise your hands, the data class transforms. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we are now the data classes since uh, Python 3.7. It's a meta class that helps you deal with uh, data oriented classes and uh, using data class decorator like init, hash, eq, and other thunder methods can be uh, generated. This is how the data classes are. Um, this is the syntax actually, the general syntax as an example, um, how they can be 
uh, years. Um, in the second code on the, on the next slide, we add it to the class, among other things, an init. So if we see here that we will, this will also generate an init. So we have the attributes here, but we also have the in, init instance with quarks. Um, it's a little bit uh, comprehensive, more detailed, and requires a little bit more uh, writing of code, but um, we have the data class transform here, uh, and um, the as model uh, method, what well, this is fair. this is just for testing purposes, of course, to see what we print. But uh, this one, this one here is very important because this is actu this actually will generate our init if we ju uh, without actually defining it here and using these uh, attributes. Uh, so the function will take them and it will automatically create the init um, uh, uh, for us. So this is what what is usually called this. Uh, what is usually called be, uh, what usually means uh, this uh, the transformation. I know that the example is a bit a bit more complicated, but uh, it is one of the best uh, for understanding how actually this conception works. Of course, we have some speed improvements. Uh, some people believe very hard that the speed is really improved. Some other, uh, other people don't believe it that much. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, sorry, something happened here in my heading, but um, uh, this is actually, many people say that this is the first significant change that will excite the data scientists. It is the speed improvement, and uh, uh, actually, uh, data came here, they, um, they, they did a test, uh, uh, and uh, they found out that uh, the, during the standard bench, uh, benchmark suit, that, that runs about 25% faster compared to 3.10. Um, of course, the documents, they claim that it will be up to 60% faster. Um, uh, actually, what Datacam did is uh, they compared two Docker installations, uh, and uh, they were with uh, full with functions, so we have the Monte Carlo um, uh, transforming um, numbers into floats, some work with uh, regex, uh, and uh, you can see the differences here. Uh, in milliseconds, of course. I don't know how accurate this test is, but it is one of the most popular around the web. Uh, so I decided to include it into my presentation. There were also other people uh, claiming that there are different differences, really big differences between uh, Python 3.10 and 3.11, where uh, they made some tests with algorithms, uh, different kind of algorithms or um, uh, processing big uh, lists, dictionaries, and so on, so they see really good improvement. But we will see in the future, I think, what happens. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about Python 3.12, because it's coming. It's planned to be released during the autumn, so let's see that um, they claim that we will have even better uh, error messages. Uh, we will also have errors about missing modules, so if something is missing, um, the IDE will be able to um, give us uh, some warnings that we missed something without being generated an error. Um, we will have a support for the Linux perf profiler, better protocols, uh, protocol uh, genders, um, running a profile or attaching an, uh, an, or attaching a debugger to a Python program gives you the visibility and insight into what the program is doing. This is something that. Uh, is mentioned to be revolutional, but we will see what will happen because many things are revolutional today, but actually not, they are not so significant after that. Um, in Python 3.12, you can use the type dicts uh, um, as a source of types to hint keyword arguments used in a function. So we will, we will have, when it comes to the type dicts, we will have even better, um, uh, better idea of uh, what kind of arguments we missed or uh, we have to use. Uh, or uh, what is the type of the value we have to return, and so on. So this is expected to be um, to be created for uh, to be developed for us. Um, better garbage collection is promised. I don't know if this is uh, what what will happen in the future, but we will see. Better parallelism. Um, from what I saw, the community is actively working on this one. Uh, immortal objects. It's another. It's a new and another interesting conception where. Every object in Python has a reference count that tracks how many times 
uh, other objects refer to it, including built-in objects like uh, no. So they, this will make them immortal, actually. Comprehensions and syntax, a syntax that lets you quickly construct lists, dictionaries, and sets, they could be constructed now in wine rather than by a way of temporary objects. Um, I don't know how this will be to help us because at least in my, what I imagine this might be a little bit complicated compared to what we have, but we will see. Maybe the syntax will be sim more simple. Um, and of course, they also um, uh, promised still noteworthy performance improvement. Um, we will see actually what will happen in the future. Thank you. Awesome. We have plenty of time for questions. Uh, we, I think I've learned a lot in this talk than like new, new things here. So let your curiosity go wild and uh, you can queue here for questions. Thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, Thank may, you. Maybe I don't know. I don't know very well uh, via, uh, generics and stuff like that. Uh, could you re-explain a bit, please? Uh, what does it mean uh, the variadic generics and what it is used for with the DIM example? Uh, it's actually a conception for, as I said, a cleaner code, uh, we will, where we will have the chance to combine the these generics. Actually, um, they will be kind of packed. So. As I show in the example here, I can get back in so you can see them. Uh, here it is. Look at the second ex example here where the, instead of these lines, we have this line here. And after that, during the class, uh, we can use them here as, um, as an argument uh, to, the, to the class. So this is what, is, uh, what, the, what the variety generics conception is in 3.11, if that answers your question. Hello, so my question is regarding the type dict. Uh, mm -hmm. Can it be configured in a way to give also runtime errors rather than static time errors? Because the users, uh, in the runtime, they may, I mean, since Python is very mm -hmm. dynamic, they, they may make a mistake, they can still make a mistake there. Is there some way of also? Uh, uh, yes, I think I read somewhere on the web that this is uh, more plan it for the next version, the 3.12. We will have it there, but this it is still a rumor. We don't know yet. Oh, I see. We will see it in the next months, actually in the next few months, because uh, from what I understood, the 3.12 is planned to be released in November. Yeah. So in the next months, we will understand about this, but this is a good question, yeah. And there are a lot of, um, uh, a lot of rumors all around the web, uh, around your questions. So yeah, thank you for the question. Really good one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi, I have a question about writing exceptions mm -hmm. uh, with that new syntax. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we have we could write an exception by just passing it into the brackets when you write the exception, and uh, now we have that new syntax with that notes, a bit cryptic one. And so I wanted to ask if it's the same thing actually or it's different in any way than just writing mm, it? I think it's similar. Yeah. I think it's similar. Yeah. Um, actually, this one, this one was created yeah. uh, just to be easy for us. Uh, exceptionally, uh, the, especially the groups, because we can combine, as I said, everything at one place. And uh, when it's right, you know that uh, we have the value, we have the zero division, we have the final not final not found. So it is up to you what will be defined here. OK, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, I've got a quick question on the self type. Is it only meant to be used as a return type for methods, or can it also be used on the self parameter um, when, where uh, methods take the self parameter? Mm, for now, I've seen two types of uh, utilization, actually. Uh, let me get back. So um, you can use it. You can use it in two forms as so return self. And uh, when you when you use to return the type of the data, so this is the two utilizations, two types of uses you can implement for now. 
at least this is what I've seen on, already on GitHub and uh, on the official documentation and what people talk about. Okay, thanks. Yeah, nobody tested anything else, or at least I don't know to be made any other tests. We will see in the future, maybe in 3, 12, we will see more about the self because it will be uh, it will be extended there for more now as well. Okay. Any more questions? Don't feel shy. Cool. If not, uh, Delian would be available offline to chat. Uh, please have another round of applause for Delian. Thank you.